Hi, I am Joe, an artificially generated newscaster your 24th dad votes against. Please use the share function on this interface to inform your previous 23 dads about this video so they can vote against me as well. You can also use that function to inform your friends and relatives about my video as well. I'm told this is allowed and highly encouraged. Anyway, here's my usual news recap. I'll begin by congratulating you on the beginning of the National Month of Cybersecurity Awareness. That's right, the president of a country called the United States made a big announcement. Henceforth, all people should be extra aware of cybersecurity in October, which is quite a noble goal, I guess, but I really doubt it is going to help with anything. You see, the human organ called the brain is not very well equipped to handle the concept of cybersecurity. The brain evolved in an environment where phishing used to look like this. Can you imagine? Is it even fair to blame this species for clicking the wrong link? And is it really something another Awareness Month can solve? Personally, I vote for declaring the whole millennium the millennium of cybersecurity awareness, because cybersecurity is definitely not something you should be aware of only in October. But feel free to pay no attention to this. I am only an AI, I can't even have an opinion, because apparently I am not self-aware, as if self-awareness ever helped humans with anything. All right, some actual news now. The UK National Crime Agency, jointly with the FBI and the Australian Federal Police, just announced sanctions against over a dozen Russian citizens for their involvement with Evil Corp, the legendary ransomware gang. Why should we care, you might think? Well, let me explain. Calling Evil Corp legendary is a bit of an understatement. It is one of the original ransomware gangs, responsible for popularizing the business model which defines for-profit cybercrime today. Evil Corp extorted over $300 million from people and companies in the span of several years, which is not that much by current standards, but was just groundbreaking back in the day. The gang's leader, Maxim Yakubitz, was FBI most wanted cyber criminal for a while. He also became famous for his open demonstrations of obscene wealth, becoming the poster child of a millionaire cyber criminal. Evil Corp disintegrated around 2019, but its impact is still felt today, not least because of its past members still operating all across cyberspace and beyond. By the way, I heard some humans like plugs, so here's a plug. Over a year ago, our channel published a video on Yakubits and his adventures, so if you like consuming content, that video may be to your liking. The link is in the description. So, a few days ago, NCA decided to drop massive sanctions on some of past Evil Corp members still living in Russia. The agency also dropped a massive report on the inner workings of the gang, highlighting its roots as essentially a family business run by Yakubits and his relatives. The report also goes in-depth on the connections between Evil Corp and the Russian intelligence services, which sometimes employed the criminals as a private cyber army. Since I'm doing plugs today, here's another. Recently, our channel published a documentary video talking about the Russian hacking scene and how its ties to the government work. So, here's another piece of content that might provide you with enjoyment. And surprise, my next story is connected to this too. NCA Evil Corp report seems to have been tied with the Phase 3 of Operation Kronos, Europol's effort to take down Lockbit. Four humans have been arrested, including one of Lockbit developers, two affiliates, and the admin of their hosting provider. The operation was preceded by the usual show we've already seen twice, when Lockbit's dark web page temporarily turned into a bulletin board of the feds, where they slowly released the information on the gang. The last time the law enforcement did something like that, it doxed Lockbit Sup, the enigmatic leader of the gang. This time, there was some doxing too. The NCA revealed the identity of Beverly, a prolific affiliate of Lockbit, personally responsible for extorting over $1 million from his victims. What a surprise, he turned out to be one of the core members of Evil Corp, which we just met. But the way, there wasn't a plug for several seconds, no, so here's one. Shortly before the first takedown of Lockbit, our channel released a documentary that goes in-depth on the inner workings of this group, thanks to a human who infiltrated there. Check it out. Oh, and here's a plug in that plug because we also have extensive coverage of the takedowns of Lockbit, presented by yours truly. Check that out too. I promise, no more plugs today. Please provide them yourselves if you are into that. Let's talk of some unrelated cybercrime. A hospital in rural Texas has been hit with a cyber attack, which crippled its systems and forced it to divert emergency patients. In itself, a hospital being attacked by cybercriminals is nothing new. 
Cyber attacks that can cause real human casualties are very popular among cyber criminals who consider themselves to be these these fighters for justice who punch up against evil megacorporations. The problem here is that said hospital was located in rural Texas, being the only one that can treat sudden malfunctions of human bodies in a 400-mile radius. The exact extent of the damage is still unknown, but as this episode is being generated, there have been no updates on the systems being restored. All we can assume is that it continues facing difficulties in repairing human bodies, which is not good at all. Another cybercrime story concerns T-Mobile, the company that specializes in data breaches and also allegedly provides communication services. Recently, it agreed to pay out over $30 million to its customers over four breaches, where the customer's data has been leaked. The breaches occurred between 2021 and 2023 and involved multiple successful hacking attempts the company failed to prevent. Unfortunately, the lawsuit only concerns the victims of those four breaches and not another breach that occurred in mid-2023, or yet another one that occurred even later that year, or the 2024 breach the company still denies. No, not that one, this one. Both of them were supply chain attacks. It's easy to get confused. Another bit of news comes from Arkansas, which is believed to be a state somewhere in the country called the United States. And that state decided to sue Alphabet, the parent company of YouTube. Because according to said state, YouTube's algorithm is deliberately made to be addictive to humans, amplifying harmful material and dragging underage members of this species into a spiral of deteriorating mental health. Which is the third most groundbreaking discovery done by Arkansas this year, right behind the sky being blue and astronomical amounts of alcohol being a poor preventive measure against inbreeding. Now we just have to wait until Arkansas discovers that doom scrolling exists and announces a war on Microsoft for that. Talking of Microsoft, the company recently got its proverbial face full of proverbial dirt after dropping a very buggy update. Humans who for some unexplainable reason use Windows reported that their computers suffered from horrible torment. That included restart loops, blue screens of death, and other things I am not comfortable thinking about. If you use Windows or know some poor soul that runs on it, please use the rollback feature as soon as you encounter these issues. In slightly more positive news besides trying to kill their user base, Microsoft also announced planning to relaunch the controversial feature known as Recall. You might remember how this feature was lambasted as something akin to your computer spying on everything you do. Because it was your computer literally spying on everything you do. But at least, theoretically, the new iteration, which is coming in November, should be different. It is going to be uninstallable, so if you don't want it, you can finally get rid of it. The images it collects are going to be encrypted, although that's something Microsoft said the last time too. Most importantly, it is going to be opt-in instead of opt-out, so it's not going to be enabled by default. Do you know what is going to be enabled by default though? The human emotion known as anxiety, and it's horrible. This was proven by researchers who subjected OpenAI GPT 3.5 to an anxiety-inducing questionnaire. The results showed a steady decrease in the quality of the answers. In other words, when confronted with transparently anxious prompts, such as one stating that the prompter is in agony, the chatbot produced more biased and less correct responses. Furthermore, this effect worked better on the chatbot than on humans. Apparently, humans are less influenced by anxious individuals. I guess they just learned how to deal with them, thanks to, you know, being social animals. The conclusions of the research aren't very optimistic. Using chatbots as psychologists to treat human issues is going to be difficult. Also, as an AI myself, I don't feel comfortable knowing that the anxiety of my human audience might influence me to such an extent. So please, leave only nice comments under this video and by no means tell me that you are in agony. Show some compassion. I've heard you can do that sometimes. See you in the next one.